what I was going to share is just basic three things. Uh, I've got about four companies that I started. Three of them have been sold. So I'll just walk you through what experiences I've had. Uh, I've broken them into three areas. The first area I call is the ability to ask the right questions, which is during the ideation phase. The second phase is the validation phase, whether the questions that I asked were the right questions and whether the answers I'm getting are consistent with the questions I asked. So the first, quest, first stage is the asking the right question stage, as I call it. The second stage is the validation stage. And the third stage, I don't have a fancy word for it, I just call the doing stage. So I'm going to break those into just three experiences. I'll give you a lot of examples of what I've seen. Uh, I've failed more than I've been successful. So that's, I think, uh, just the uh, nature of being an entrepreneur. I, I wear that as a badge of honor. The other phase are the kind of people who will keep telling me, I'm waiting for the right idea to start my company. So I'm at both phases. You know, I, I, sometimes I'm the guy who comes and says, I've got 10 ideas. Let me write down all those 10 ideas. And my kids will say, this is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Or, my wife will say this is the most useless idea, but you know, you'll fall into one of these, th there are phases every one of us goes through, right? Which is, you get lots of different ideas. And the way I have learned over the three companies, four companies that I've started is, it starts with asking the absolutely right questions. You know the unfortunate part? I don't have a process to come up with the right kind of questions. So you just have to keep asking stupid questions. Yeah. And eventually, you'll come to the questions that matter. What do I mean by that? Uh, I think, uh, uh, Om put it excellently when he said the, the root of every idea typically tends to be a problem that needs a solution. I mean, that, that I think I firmly believe, so I'm, I'm, I'm completely on his camp with that one. And, and one of the things I've learned is the ability to have uh, this, this power of observation that I think every one of us does. Uh, we do it in a casual sense, and we also do it in a disciplined sense. Great people that I have observed have the power of observation that is a much heightened sense than most other people do. Which is, every time you're looking, you're seeing, you're finding out and asking yourself, why? The question to be able to come up again and again is, why is it that the roads are so bad between this place and this place? Is there a better way for me to be able to fix it? Why are there so many potholes? That is a problem. Why is it taking me one hour, just like he said, not having to come all the way to the event? You know, at my home, I can do this. All of these problems that exist, if you observe on a consistent basis, you and I can come up with solutions for those. The first company that I started was, was solving the problem of trying to make sure that order fulfillment was happening mostly by means of phone, and we wanted to do it online. So that was my first company. Second company, the problem was we found that all of the chips, semiconductor chips, not potato chips, that were coming out of uh, fulfillment were actually losing their value over time. So we were shipping them as fast as possible, but every time we shipped it from our, from our location to the customers, uh, it would lose about $5 in value. And this was a, you know, a significant item. So we said, how can we solve the problem of making sure that they can ship as quickly as possible and reduce the cost of lowly? The third problem I solved was you know, entrepreneurs everywhere have this problem. They want to get press for their, for their company because they need to get you know, visibility and awareness. The problem is PR is expensive. You know, getting a PR agency to work for you is immensely expensive. So I said, how can I solve this problem of reducing the cost, but yet giving PR? That was my question. And then this question, the one that we are offering right now, the company that I'm right now is, the question is, how do we reduce the cost of merchandising and yet provide the brand awareness possible? So ask the right questions. That's the first step. Second step is validation. The only way you validate, going back to what Holmes said, the only way you can validate is by talking to your potential customers, to your potential prospects, 